Hello and welcome back. And that's right, it's me and Eddie back here on a lovely little Zoom in our tiny little boxes. I think you're over there, over there, Eddie. Um, today we want to talk about the durability of storage media. It's going to be a very quick video today because although we've been running that whole free advice section, plug, 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 talking about things we do, how fantastically arrogant. Um, although we talk about these things and the little tools that Ed developed over on Nas Compares, one thing that never really gets addressed in the most user-friendly, chewable crayon fashion is about the durability of storage media. Obviously, we're talking predominantly about hard drives and SSDs, and we're not going to go on a kind of overarching abstract tangent on uh, in data center and enterprise. What about home users? What about their utility and that amount of data? So this video is going to be a very quick subject um, a quick addressing of this subject. Eddie's going to talk predominantly about the hard drives, and I'm going to talk about SSD and the state of durability. So, Eddie, straight away, and again, we've not really prepped for this video, so we're going to freewheel it. Um, you, personally, when I say to you, hard drive durability, what does that mean? Yeah, that means the life expectancy. How long can I expect this drive to actually last? Because there's an ongoing question. Should I go for, uh, they call it shack drives, when you remove them from USB case? And, and just go as cheap as possible or go Barracuda drives. Uh, or uh, other people say you should go for NAS hard drives and there's this question, should you or should you not? And, and the answer is not very straightforward because it depends really if you have uh, a one bay, two bay or five bay, what sort of RAID you're going to be running on, mm -hmm. how, how many hours a day you're going to be running and, and what sort of workload you're going to be putting on these drives. All this matters really. So I was trying to create a life expectancy calculator but it's not as easy as, for, uh, as, as you might think mm -hmm. so I'm, i might be actually focusing more on given warranties using that as a base ba base base sort of um threshold where the formula could be built around it mm -hmm. so based on the spec sheets you can get from manufacturers they usually would say that um this particular drive is supposed to be running 24 hours a day or uh, eight hours a day uh the there should be 180 terabytes uh, of data being written throughout the year and, and things like that. So mm -hmm. you may be able to calculate what the life expectancy could be for the drive if you just run it for a few few hours a day. If you only back up your essential photos, which might be only a few gigabytes a day, all these uh, factors taken in, taken in consideration could actually mean that the life expectancy can be doubled or tripled. That's so, a warranty, yeah. So these are the things. With, with SSDs, um, you also might need to look at uh, smart tests, like same similar to HDDs, where you can actually see where, what's the percentage on them left, what expend, because they usually wear out, similar to hard drives in a way. So I you can see with the, when they're actually going to be failing and how long you can expect them to run. Because I was going to say, with SSDs, that question of durability, I think most users that think about the durability of SSDs, and, you know, we, we, we here at NASCompares are as guilty as anyone else, this durability rating is predominantly recorded, as you say, with hard drives in a workload, so, you know, 180, 300, and 550 on regular pro and enterprise class hard drives. And with SSDs, it is regist uh, registered as either TBW, terabytes written, <clears throat> or uh, and a more granular methodology of dri drive rights per day, or data rights per day, w uh, DWPD. Um, but most home users, and I would even say most Soho or SMB users, are never going to hit that threshold, as you you rightly point out with ssds people talk about them how they're not suitable for long-term storage and of course that is true to a degree once you compare them up against optical dr optical drives but it's the way then the nand and those rates are written on because if you have a drive that's one terabyte of storage and it has um you know a 300 terabyte workload uh it's a terabyte uh, per year writing um limitation to it underneath that warranty of course which is always overpowering you would have to delete that data on that terabyte drive 300 times. And I don't think a lot of home users so are going to be deleting that data 300 times within that time frame. They're just not. Um, and when it comes to hard drives, and as you mentioned with NAS, there isn't a tremendous recycle rate with the data on there. So when you're developing this tool, as we've discussed before, one of the main issues we've got is this idea of 
the time frame of people writing this data. So they'll go, oh, I'm putting on, I've got eight terabytes of 4K RAW that I've been editing for a while. I'm accruing an extra 10 to 50 gigabytes per day. The fact of the matter is they're not deleting that old data. Some of it, the warm data, but the, the majority of that data is not being deleted. And I think that's the big thing about durability for me, that the way durability is presented is a kind of stick to beat people with sometimes is just not valid outside of the data center. I mean, when we talk about NAS and when you're developing, like the tools you mentioned, you did that price per terabyte uh, tool you made a little while ago that we talked about on the channel. Um, when it comes to the specifications, how clear do you think brands are about the importance of the durability? Or do you think they overshoot it or even underestimate it? I think they are pretty straightforward because on those spec sheets, you can see things like uh, mean time be between failures. Uh, so this is usually uh, a number of people use in data centers when they're deciding on what drive they're going uh, to be using because number itself doesn't mean really anything, but it's more like a benchmark. So you can see that pro drives might have mm. two and a half million where this is one million. So the, the uh, failure, mm. potential failure could ha that could happen is uh, less less likely to be to be the case. That repl um, that replacement rate of MTBF again that feels to me like it's fantastically data center. And when we have these drives that are going inside prosumer or you know even hobbyist machines that have got a one million hour MTBF. The idea is it's that mean time between failure, it is, or MTTFs in some cases, it's that swap out ratio time frame, you know, uh, that, that expected life and that's a bulk number. And I just don't feel a lot of people are going to utilize that as a statistic of measurement on drives. Yeah, that's exactly. That's one of the things they're adding. Also, they're adding things like called the load unload cycle, which means uh, how many times can you write uh, data or, or read data and, and pull the, the head back mm. so that the, how, how many times you can finish this cycle and in average they, they start with around 600,000 okay so which mm. means you could actually use this number to to see how far are you uh, <laughs> how are you in this lifetime with this hard drive when 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 you can expect it to drive to, to fail and then, and then, of course, something I've talked about more recently with like that, that Mac 2 before you buy drive and that 20 TB Seagate Iron Wolf that we talked about. Um, there's this whole idea of your, when you're measuring drives by their durability, uh, and we'll go with the terabytes written, and you look at, say, a Pro Series drive at 300 terabytes written, when uh, a 40, uh, sorry, we'll say an 8 TB drive and an 18 TB drive have only got about 10 megabytes of transfer speed difference between them, but they have the same terabyte written workload rate, it does bring into that question about does that mean in a quasi sort of set up way with the performance benchmarks being equal relatively to SATA, that that 8 TB drive is sort of going to last longer or shorter depending on how you're going to use it. And I think workload limits have remained static over all of these years within that whole regular pro enterprise series uh, dynamic, but the capacities have exploded, even though the performance numbers. Look at the Mac 2 series drive. The Mac 2 series drive has a, a performance in that dual line architecture of between 500 and I think 544 megabytes per second on SATA, but it has exactly the same annual workload limit there as a six or eight TB Exos drive with a single actuator there. So yeah. there's, it brings into question the uh, the actual viability and utility for most users, even at the data center, I might add, um, of these st statistics. And it brings into question, is there a better way to measure durability on storage media? And if, and if there is, why are we not pursuing it? We haven't even touched on Backblaze, of course. Arguably the industry standard when it comes to measuring durability on drives when they publish their reports every quarter. I mean, you've been a keen follower of Backblaze in so many ways for so many years, haven't you, Ed? Yeah, exactly. It's much easier to actually build some sort of tools around actual proven data. Mm. Because Backblaze is re uh, reporting every single drive uh, 
that has failed over the quarter. This is very valuable I'm, data. I'm going to have to stop you because um, I think a lot of people, and again, I'm not so much a detractor on this, but there are a lot of users out there that will see the Backblaze uh, stats and they are really, really useful stats and they are doing a banging job for everyone, but they always have to be taken in context, don't they? Because these are drives that have gone through their data center, their systems. And when you see the results of, say, a 0.13%, which actually a 0.013% failure, that is based on an odd number of, say, 60 drives or 120 drives. And taking that data and comparing it against this other one that's been running for four years and they've got 450 drives, it is a valuable benchmark, but it has to be taken, I think, within the context of each individual drive. They are very clear indicators. And there's, of course, that business of the... Um, you remember when those Seagate 1.5 TB drives were failing all over the place? And then it turned out that everyone's 1.5 TB drives were sort of a bit shonky. Backblaze was a great resource during that because you had that comparative data. And I think as long as they're taken within context, Backblaze is definitely a, a great place to look at durability. It's, I just, I'm not sure how I feel about the individual's to drive stats from, say, drive A and drive B being compared when there's so many variables in between. This is very difficult because the same drive can be uh, renewed. So, because normally when there's a big capacity drive coming out, let's say 20, 22 terabyte, they fill it with helium just to make it smoother and stuff like that until they figure out how to replace it with air. Mm -hmm. So technically, it looks like the same drive, spe same spec sheet, but life expectancy is different. Mm -hmm. even though on, on the paper it looks the same. But also it raises an interesting point you were mentioning about um, data written and read. The SSD and HDDs are very, very different because their warranty, unlike with hard drives, will expire after certain data has been written to mm -hmm. the SSD, which is quite unfair compared to hard drives. But because hard drives actually should have the case like that because there are more mechanical parts involved in the hard drive. Mm -hmm. So there are there are a few things that can fall apart, whereas on SSDs, that all you have is really chips or controllers. Mm. So that's, that, that's an interesting point. And then, of course, I mean, there would be uh, detractors that might say, oh, uh, well, SSDs have a higher, higher, higher performance threshold, so they have to factor that into the warranty. But they've been running uh, warranty or uh, amount of data written ever since the very first or second generation of SATA SSDs. I remember some early OWC SSDs, if anyone remembers that brand, they had like a 370 meg uh, write speed and that had that terror, it had that write limit written into parallel with that warranty there. Um, one of the things that I'm quite intrigued to say, we talked about this off camera, but I think it's worth bringing it up when we're talking about PCIe Gen 5 SSDs and durability and whether the industry is ready. You will highlight in a recent video on Linus Tech Tips. I'm sure if it's not already listed somewhere on the side of the channel uh, when YouTube's algorithm reads everything we say here, so I'm sure it's there already. But there was that discussion about Gen 5 SSDs and the surrounding architecture behind them. And you and I had slightly different views on that. I mean, how does that impact durability when we're talking about Gen 5 SSDs attempting to hit 10 or 12 gigabyte, uh, gigabytes uh, transfer performance there with the surrounding environment? Yeah, now that was a very interesting video he actually made, and it was quite true what he, he highlighted. He said that even though all these new generations SSDs are coming out, Generation 4, Generation 5 now, the speeds seemingly are going up, the speeds are doubling, but when you actually do a real life test, once the cache is filled, this, that speed drops to the same level as Gen 4. So in that case, there's a question. So what's the point actually getting this uh, Gen 5 SSD if I'm going to be having exactly the same Slowly. speed after I'm playing a game or doing video editing for 15 minutes? Mm. But then he, he highlighted a really good point saying that, OK, it's not important really the speed you get. Um, Per se, in total, in general, but the speed you get per lane, because now you can squeeze, uh, squeeze in more bandwidth into fewer lanes, so you don't need to allocate four lanes for SSD anymore. You might allocate only two, mm. and all this is very important in, in general in, in infrastructure of the motherboard. How you de dedicate those lanes, how, how many lanes you go to storage, how much you go to networks, the network, and, and, mm. and so on and so forth. Which brings us right the way back round to durability, because the other building block and arguable hurdle, which hopefully Gen Five development will then 
much like Moore's Law, etc., will then push the rest of the industry about that NAND development. Right now, the majority of those Gen 5 SSDs are rolling out with Micron 232 layer NAND, with the majority of Gen 4 SSDs running out 176 layer NAND. And of course, a denser layer count NAND SSD has a higher performance. So now the NAND has to keep up with the Gen 5 bandwidth that's suddenly getting opened up so substantially. But with that, there is the question of durability again, because unless, you know, they want to get those large capacities with QLC NAND, which has that durability dip, Gen 5, I think, is potentially going to hit a, um, a durability problem. Because as NAND is slowly going to be uh, rolled out and the increments between each layer count rolled out by NAND developers are going to get smaller. We're like, oh, we've added another 20 or 30 layers on this squared, you know, creation of that NAND. I think with that durability, there's going to be the SSDs coming out with the durability. Currently, the industry standard is uh, 0.38 drive writes per day is the standard on Gen 5 and Gen 4. You do get ones in Gen 4 that are bigger, like the Seagate. Um, FICUDA 530 and stuff like that that are uh, durability led but I think this next generation we're potentially looking at a situation where the durability ratings might drop or once again we might see a new measurement of durability to factor into this higher performance speed maybe a durability rating that's you know calculated with performance in mind like oh you'll get this much as long as you cap yourself at 10 or 12 gig you'll be fine but, I mean, do you know what? This has just been a quick discussion today because we do want to talk about this a lot more about durability. In the description, there should be some of the tools that Eddie's either uh, finished and are now live on the site or other tools for, you know, calculating uh, hard drives and SSDs in the market right now in terms of durability and factoring it up. So I do recommend you check that out. And I will link, uh, obviously, to that enormous uh, Linus video. Not that he needs it, but I'll put it down there uh, for you to find it down there below. But apart from that, have you, you got anything else to add on the subject, Eddie? No. Not yet. There we go. You get to work. Finish those tools, and I'll keep doing the gibber gabber here on YouTube. But thank you so much for watching, everyone. Uh, you know, subscribe, like, check out the tools below. And apart from that, have yourselves a beautiful week, guys. See you later, Eddie.